Today is uh, Wednesday, June 17th, 2015. We're at the Paris Air Show with Evan McCory, uh, Vice President of International Sales for Viking Aircraft. Good morning, Evan. Good morning. Uh, one hears a lot about uh, aircraft, airlines and aircraft being upsized these days, yet your company seems to be doing quite well with a, uh, with a 20 seat, in the 20 seat size. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the Twin Otter is such a versatile airplane. It absolutely uh, is, is it's considered to be the last mile solution for a lot of people. And what that means is they can fly their Global Express or they can fly their Gulfstream somewhere, but to get to the island or get to uh, you know uh, an unimproved runway, they need our airplane. So a Twin Otter can operate on grand, uh, sorry, grass, gravel, dirt, sand, mud, water, ice, snow. So uh, it, it's such a versatile airplane and uh, it, it, it gets people to their destination. That's really why the, the aircraft is stood the test of time. Is there a specific geographic location? Uh, is this pretty much a global market for you or, or markets that are best for your Twin Otter? Yeah, it is It is a global airplane. Um, we're finding that we're having a lot of success today in Southeast Asia. Uh, you're going to hear about something today at 1 o'clock where there's another market where we're going to be expanding to significantly. But in terms of the world, we sort of go uh, Southeast Asia, um, Russia, Africa, Latin America, and then the U.S. So a lot of the developing parts of the world where you may not have the improved runways yeah, and so other we, things. We do really well where infrastructure is not prominent. Yeah, so it's uh, it's been great actually. That's uh, that's great. Offering a uh, float plane is unusual, and we know the Twin Otter can operate on floats, and we've uh, seen it used successfully in the Pacific Northwest uh, back home. Uh, how unusual is the uh, the float plane, and how big is the how big is the market for those? The market is actually really substantial. Uh, anywhere you have people where there's large water bases and they're trying to do connectivity either from from land out to the water or they want to land near uh, land on the water near land, the, the airplane does really well. Um, we're seeing, especially the, the requirements coming out of China, requirements coming out of Greece, uh, and certainly the Caribbean, that the demand for the, the, the water-based airplane is tremendous. Um, so we actually we operate two different kinds of, of airplanes on water. We operate with straight floats, where if you go to the Maldives, uh, Maldives, you know, train, uh, TMA and, and those guys have like there's over 60 airplanes flying today. But we also operate the airplane on what's called an amphib configuration, which means that it can land on water or land at any time. So it's it, again the versatility of the aircraft is what makes it so desirable. But people love being able to land on the water. That's great. What sort of split are you seeing between land-based planes and float planes these days? Yeah, so today we're really about 70% land-based and 30% water. Um, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but uh, with the demand that we see coming, uh, that, that percentage could change slightly in the future. Uh, where, do, where do you see Viking over the next five years, and what are you looking at for growth in, in terms of the market? Sure, so uh, I, I see tremendous opportunities for Viking. If you were to look out at, at our pipeline today, uh, the demand is there. It's absolutely substantial. Um, you know, we're looking for sort of a 20% growth year over year, and uh, we see a market for the, just this airplane as designed for 500 units, really over the next 10 to 15 or 20 years. So uh, a lot of great opportunities for us, and we see a very bright future. Thanks for being with us today, Evan. Hey, thank you very much for your time.